Can we move to member statement? Very good. I recognize, I will miss you. I recognize the member for Brampton North. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, it's my great honour to extend my heartfelt gratitude and a warm welcome to His Holiness Mahant Swami Maharaj as he graces our province with his presence later this week. His Holiness is among the most respected Hindu leaders in the world today and the current spiritual leader of the BAPS Swami Narayan Santha, a worldwide organization dedicated to promoting harmony. The presence of His Holiness Mahant Swami Maharaj marks the commencement of the celebrations for BAPS Canada's 50 years of dedicated community service. This auspicious event will ignite a year-long festivity, allowing us to reflect upon and commemorate the remarkable achievements and invaluable contributions of BAPS to our great nation. Over the past five decades, BAPS Canada has grown to become recognized for their community service, remarkable achievements, and invaluable spiritual and humanitarian endeavors in more than 150 towns and cities across Canada. We commend their unwavering commitment to lift society as a whole. Particularly, BAPS played a vital role in supporting and serving communities in need throughout the pandemic. In closing, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to His Holiness Mahant Swami Maharaj for coming to Ontario. We're incredibly thankful for the impact of BAPS and making Ontario a stronger and better place to live, work, and play. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Humber River, Black Creek. Thank you, Speaker. Life has never been so expensive. And now, more than ever, we need real consumer protection in Ontario. People are paying more for less. And when you get gouged, ripped off, or taken advantage of, where do you turn? How about the ministry's consumer hotline? Tens of thousands of complaints, not a single fine laid. So you get a lawyer to fight a giant industry who can crush you like a bug. It's the classic story of David and Goliath. So last year, I tabled a solution, the Ontario Consumer Watchdog Act, the creation of a powerful advocate who would have the back of consumers and the resources and powers to stand up to Goliath. And you know what? The government said no. They voted on the side of Goliath. This afternoon, I'm proud to table a new and strengthened Ontario Consumer Watchdog Act that reflects the crushing times consumers are facing. I'm calling on all members of this House to do the right thing and support this very important NDP bill to bring real consumer protection to Ontario. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Mississauga Lakeshore. Thank you, Speaker. Recently, I was proud to announce that nine organizations in Mississauga Lakeshore have just received $969,000 through the Ontario Trillion Foundation Resilience C Community Fund. This includes $200,000 to support Arma House, the only transitional shelter in Peel for victims with domestic violence. The new uh, house will have double the capacity moving forward. The Embrave Agency to End Violence received $40,000. Dean Support Services received $200,000 to help expand their program for people with intellectual disabilities. And Epilepsy South Centre Ontario which is now based in Port Credit, received $79,000 to help expand their program for people living with epilepsy and their families. The Don Rowing Club received $90,000 for a safety boat and rowing shells to expand their programs in Port Credit. And as the, we're looking forward to the summer festival season, the Southside Shuffle Festivals received $76,000, and the Cre Creation Theatre Company received $200,000. Speaker, I want to congratulate these nonprofits again on receiving these grants, and I want to thank them for everything they do to enrich the lives of people in Mississauga Lakeshore and to help build a better and stronger Ontario for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for London West. Uh, 
Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, two years ago today, my community was shaken to our core by a despicable act of Islamophobic violence when four members of London's beloved Absal family were killed in a hate-motivated attack. Yesterday, the grieving family issued a statement about the profound loss they experienced on June 6, 2021, and the emptiness that can never be filled, as they remembered Salman, Medea, Talat, and Yumna for the kind, caring, and beautiful people they were. Over the last two weeks, numerous events have been held in London to mark this sombre anniversary, leading up to tonight's vigil organized by the Youth Coalition Combating Islamophobia, a group formed by Yumna's friends and cousins. These events and the extraordinary coming together of our community in the wake of the attack are helping Londoners heal from the pain of that terrible day. In the words of Memorial Speaker, out of darkness comes light. Islamophobia and racism are real and deadly. We must channel our grief and anger to ensure that no family, no community ever has to face the horror we experienced in London. To truly honour the Afzal family, let us replace pain with purpose. Let us unite across party lines to ensure that no Ontarian has to fear being targeted for their faith, the colour of their skin, or who they are. Let us strengthen our commitment to act through meaningful legislative change. Speaker, love is greater than hate and hate can be overcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Thunder Bay, Atacoka. Thank you, Speaker. I'm proud to rise today in honour of a momentous upcoming milestone, and that's the 50th anniversary of Fort William Historical Park. Over the past five decades, the park has become a cherished part of Thunder Bay's identity, its significance resonating not only with the constituents in Thunder Bay, but with all Canadians who value the preservation of our collective heritage. The park is an example of our nation's history, encapsulating the stories, struggles and triumphs of those who came before us allowing us to learn from the past and shape a better future. <clears throat> Elder Freda MacDonald's influence in 1976 led to substantial growth in the Indigenous Life Program in Anishinaabe encampment, establishing accurate portrayals of Anishinaabe culture and the significance of women in the fur trade. Beyond the cultural and educational significance, the park has made a substantial economic contribution to our region and beyond. It is also important that we acknowledge and applaud the dedicated staff volunteers and community that partners who have played a vital role in ensuring that this landmark continues to thrive through their commitment to historical accuracy, authenticity, and a memorable visitor experience. Let us work together across party lines to ensure that landmarks like Fort William Historical Park remain a treasured source of education and celebration. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the clerk for his service to Ontario and the members in this chamber and wish him all the best on his retirement. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Hamilton West, and Castor Dundas. During Constituency Week, I had the pleasure of visiting the First Unitarian Church of Hamilton as they hosted an open house for HATS, the Hamilton Alliance for Tiny Shelters. HATS is a not-for-profit organization working as part of the solution to the unhoused crisis in Hamilton. Their vision is to create a vision, a village of small heated cabins to provide transitional housing and support services for residents living on the street. I had the chance to tour a charming tiny cabin and to meet so many devoted volunteers, such as Tom Cooper, the director for the Hamilton Roundtable for Poverty Reduction, Kim uh, Martin, who's the executive director of the Social Planning and Research Council of Hamilton, and Julie Shea, who's the director of Centre 3, an arts organization that created a fantastic 3D model of the Hats Village. Hats has already raised more than $300,000 and has the support services lined up from various community partners. Hats has the funding, the resources and the partners in place, they are now working to find a, a site. So thank you for your compassion and devotion to helping others in our community. Hats off to hats. There is no place more beautiful uh, to be this weekend than on the shores of Hamilton Bay at the most westerly point of Lake Ontario. It was a pleasure to participate in the annual sail pass and to recognize the Royal Hamilton Yacht Club for achieving silver in the Clean Marine Eco Program. 
Uh, the Clean Marine Eco Program is an environmental program that encourages environmental practices uh, associated with recreational boating across Ontario. So congratulations once again to Cindy Brown, uh, Suzanne Broveda, Paul Veda, and Ross Monroe, Chair of the Royal Hamilton Yacht Club Environment Committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Thornhill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. So June is here, which means the five-day uh, Vaughan International Film Fester is, Festival is fast approaching. Now, in its 11th year, the Vaughan Film Festival, or VFF, uh, offers public screenings, scholarships, industry events, and panels to support experienced and aspiring filmmakers. Lauren Pappas, Paolo Calzini, Daniel Fusco are students at St. Elizabeth Catholic School in Thornhill, where films are featured at the VFF this year. Lauren's film, titled Influenced, is about uh, an influencer, a teen influencer, and the realities of that. Uh, Give Back is Paolo's film, which is a story about a young woman who helps out a friend in need. The VFF offers a platform for independent creators to share their short films and further excel within the industry, giving them an opportunity to reach over 20,000 people. Uh, arts and culture, like the VFF, enrich our lives and stimulate economic growth, and it would not be possible without artists like Lauren, Paolo, and Daniel, who contribute to our community. I want to thank the sponsors and the volunteers and the creative minds who started the project. Mr. Antonio Yanko, I invite the extended community to come join us on June 19th at the VFF to celebrate filmmakers and bring, uh, who bring the communities together and put Vaughn and Thornhill on the international stage. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Member statements. Member for Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you, Speaker. It is my honour today to rise to salute all those who fell and served in the greatest invasion in history on June 6, 1944, known to most as D-Day. One regiment, the 1st Hussars, was the only Allied formation to reach its objective on D-Day. Later on June 6, two troop C Squadron, led by Lieutenant William McCormick, reached the objective of Conbayou Highway before having to return to the Allied line of advance that was significantly behind their spearhead. Mr. Speaker, I hope all Ontario joins me in saluting the First Hussars and their garrison cities of London and Sarnia. We salute their service and sacrifice in one of the greatest battles in history. I'd also like to recognize the MPP for Sarnia, Bob Bailey, who has attended these sacred sites in Normandy. Well done. As the Supreme Allied Commander said on the eve of invasion, the tide has turned. The free men of the world are marching towards victory. Let it be known here and evermore, the victory's ascent came from southwestern Ontario. The first Tuzar's motto in Latin is hodie non cross, or an English speaker today, not tomorrow. God save the King. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements? The member for Sarnia Lambton. Thank you, uh, Speaker. And yes, 12 years ago today, I was on Juneau Beach uh, with the first desires. Thanks for reminding me about that. So I remember from London, Middlesex, Elgin. But my statement today is important as well. It's uh, celebrating the initiative of uh, June the 1st when we kicked off ALS Day. The month of June is officially ALS Awareness Month in Canada. I'm proud to show my support today for the approximately 3,000 Canadians living with this devastating disease. ALS is a relentlessly progressive fatal motor neuron disease that eventually leads to the loss of the ability to move, speak, and breathe. This disease <coughs> can move with startling swiftness. Four out of five people die within two to five years of their diagnosis. Sorry about that. The compounding impact on families emotionally, financially, and psychologically is tremendous. The people and families affected by ALS measure time not by months or years, but by loss, loss of function and loss of life. As members of this legislature, we have an opportunity throughout June to show our support 
for people, people living with ALS across Canada and demonstrate leadership on important health issues that affect this community. I want to extend my best wishes to the Canadian ALS community for June ALS Awareness Month and acknowledge the tremendous work done by the ALS Society of Canada to change what it means to live with this unrelenting disease. I encourage everyone to take the time to learn more about this devastating disease and how you can make a difference in the lives of people living with ALS. Learn more about ALS at www.als.ca. Now is the time to work together towards a future without ALS. Thank you. Peter. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning.